Last night was also senior night for our football team and, and all the groups associated with it, our band and cheer and dance. And it was, it was a night to show appreciation and to celebrate uh, the end of a season. And, and many of you well remember uh, that those moments with your coaches, with your family, and with your friends are some of the greatest memories of, of high school. Those are important moments. But what we believe at Blackman High School is that the celebration shouldn't stop there, right? We, we have a big heart for our alumni, um, and we want to stay engaged with them as much as possible. Um, even within an ever-growing Blackman alumni community, um, there are also those special few, uh, those elite few who we honor today, um, whether they were players or coaches, um, and we believe they deserve unique uh, remembrance and unique commemoration. As we begin our fifth induction ceremony of the Blackman High School Athletic Hall of Fame, today we celebrate a coach who was here from the very first day. We celebrate a four-year star on one of our earliest soccer teams. We celebrate a two-time state championship wrestler, a record-setting point guard, both at the high school and at the collegiate level. As we look ahead, we believe that the best years are yet to come here at Blackman. All of our coaches, of our programs, and of our student athletes have placed Blackman in an, in an elite status in our region, and it's a name that's recognized wherever you go in the state of Tennessee. With all of the work that we collectively put into these efforts, we recognize that we would not be where we are today were it not for those who we are honoring here in just a few moments. Before we honor Jeff and Matthew, Jonathan and Bill, I just wanted to say personal congratulations to these men, to their families. Um, I've been in Blackman for 23 years. Um, they neither let me play sports nor coach a team, uh, and that was probably a wise decision many years ago. Um, but I have had the opportunity to see each of these individuals compete and represent Blackman High School at the highest levels. And when you think about our previous inductees, and I hope that you'll take some time to, to look at, uh, at our cabinet here, and you look at the names of David Price, Octavius Mathers, Crystal Dangerfield, Kenny Meredith, just to name a few. Those individuals are honored to be in the presence of the individuals that we are inducting today. And it's clear that this Hall of Fame is not only prestigious, but extremely well deserved. Inductees know that you will be held in the highest regard in your own water. Uh, for your accomplishments, they have not and they will not be at this time, I'd like to introduce Kevin Meadows, and he will share with you our athletic mission and vision. Good morning. On your tables, you will find a copy of the vision and mission of Blackman High School Athletics. I'd like to share that with you. The vision, we will become the school of choice in the Southeast for all student athletes because our teachers and coaches strive to be transformational and purpose-driven. Mission, we will consistently cultivate high character and highly competitive student athletes. The core values, we seek to do what is best for the student athlete in every decision. We take pride in presentation of our teams and facilities. We engage our community through caring service. We honor our alumni for excellence, both past and present. We preserve tradition while pursuing innovations that promote success and safety. We all benefit from the success of others in academics and in sports. And we believe that students can outperform expectations in the classroom and on the field floor with hard work and strong coaching, teaching, and desire. We are vital. The athletic leadership team began putting these, play these uh, plans into place several years ago. <coughs> At this time, we'd like to recognize the members of the athletic leadership team. Please stand to be recognized. something like this might ever happen, 
we've ever been successful enough to celebrate our athletic programs. Several years ago, as we were celebrating our 20th anniversary, it seemed like the appropriate time and place to put into the Athletic Hall of Fame. Now as we look ahead at the next 20 years, we look around and see much of the success of our players, coaches, administrators, student bodies will enable us to enjoy this. We would like to recognize the members of our Hall of Fame committee. Please stand and be recognized. The vision of the Hall of Fame was to create a venue in which we can honor our athletes across all sports programs. The Hall of Fame's committee's goal was to honor the elite of our student athletes. Our criteria was highly valued our own field, our own court success, as well as sportsmanship, citizenship, and contributions to our community. You can go online and access our nomination forms and view our criteria. We've also left some copies of our nomination forms at the front office. Now I'd like to introduce our athletic director, Mr. Scott Wallace. We'll oversee the introduction of the four new inductees into the Black High School. things and while Sega was ahead at that point Jeff tied the game and then
He also earned individual Coach of the Year awards many times in his career. Jeff eventually retired from high school coaching and still coaches his girls, who he says runs in ragged. He is still not an outstanding educator at OHS and a great family man. In conclusion, I would like to thank his parents for allowing me to coach him for four years here at Blackman. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Hall of Famer Jeff Boynton. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to correct something really quick in that. Uh, <coughs> Vice was nice enough to uh, leave out the parts of why I wasn't playing a seagull, and that is because uh, I fell off the hood of my friend's car and got run over in that parking lot right there. And I had no skin on my foot. And so I wasn't playing. And at halftime, when we were down, I uh, I refused to lose to Siegel in their first in their first year. So I went home and uh, got my bag and got all my clothes. My mom didn't go to the game because I wasn't playing. And as I'm walking out, she said, "Where are you? Where are you going?" I said, "I'm going to play." And I walked out, closed the door, and I left because I knew that Joe Boynton would not have have let me let me. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Smith and his administration uh, and Hall of Fame Committee uh, for, uh, for this incredible honor. Um, a special thank you, though, goes to, uh, well, first, Mr. Wallace uh, for putting up with me in math class uh, in the early 2000s. And I, I guess I can stop giving Mr. Wallace such a hard time. For, for not inducting me earlier, I was, I was asked to be uh, to put an application in 2019 in the original uh, Hall of Fame class, and I got overlooked. <laughs> for David Price, <laughs> which is kind of the well, not the story of my high school career, but it happened quite often. And then uh, I went to Lipscomb, and he was at Vanderbilt, and. Uh, Right, right next to one another, and of course he still dominated the headlines. But that's okay. He's, he's a fantastic, uh, fantastic person. So it's also been good to catch up with people I didn't know. We're going to be here, Mr. Meadows, uh, who is also my marketing teacher, and uh, and Miss Vick was my principal here at Blackman uh, so many years ago. It feels like now. Um, I, I could also I could also give Miss Vick a hard time. I did apply an interview. <laughs> in, in 2004, and uh, well, I'm an old one now, so. <laughs> <clears throat> no, but it's 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 great to see so many familiar faces. Um, and just a quick thing uh, that I'm thinking about it. It it's a source of pride for me. I I have so many memories coming back here. Coming back here to Blackman, not only, well, as a player, but, but as a coach now, and I, I do have strong ties. Obviously, I love Vice and, and was a mentor to me for so many years, not only playing, but coaching. And uh, Vlad Borbosen was at Oakland prior and is now over here and, and has some very big shoes to fill. Uh, but I also know some of some other coaches, uh, Coach Grandstaff, and uh, Zippy is the, is the girls' soccer coach, and I coached her. I guess I'm getting old, and I coached Zippy, and she's you know she's up here teaching and coaching. Um, and so I want to congratulate the administration and, and all the, the staff here at Blackman that every time that I talk to somebody that that is here uh, and teaching or coaching in some capacity, all they have to say are positive things, and all they can say is that it's just a wonderful place to be. It's a wonderful place to, to work. And the staff and the community and the administration are just, are just good people. And even though that I don't you know, currently teach here, it does, you know, it, it, it gives me a source of pride to know that, that I am somehow you know, anciently uh, 
affiliated with, with black. Um, I have so many positive memories of here, and I think as athletes, you know, you constantly have some kind of like flashbacks to playing days or, or uh, coaching days or something. And I will always, like forever, remember uh, some of my moments and some of my times here at Blackman. You know, um, mine filled with high school and college and, and then coaching, but what will always be present are some of my memories here at Blackman. And that's, you know, as, as Vice said, meet the Siegel. Uh, but also Riverdale, and, and I remember driving to, we had to play Riverdale in the district finals, but we had to drive to White County to do it. <laughs> and it was the, the, a terrible field, and um, it was small, and the refs were bad, and I, did, I, don't, I didn't play great. I kept getting kicked, and we went into double overtime, and I play the ball down on the left-hand side, and I'm running, screaming, coming down the field, asking for the ball back, you know, being the ball. And um, Brett played, crossed it across the table, who put his big head on it, and we scored. And those little things that pop into my memory is that Chris Sanders went, and he, he transferred from Riverdale, he went over in front of the Riverdale parents and fans to celebrate, and jumped, and then when he landed, both of his calves cramped. And <laughs> so, you know, it's those little things like that, you know, that, uh, that as I flash back, uh, I still have such vivid memories of being here uh, and being a part of Oak, or being a part of Black. Uh, as Vice said, I do have some of those those memories as a, as a coach at Oakland. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. I do vividly remember four in the cooler. <laughs> um, I, I'll try to be, you know, cut it a little bit, but uh, I'd like to thank some people who, you know, without them, I wouldn't be here. Um, I'll have more to say about Coach Vice later, but um, my amazing wife, uh, Kristen, who, although I wasn't blessed to, to know her in high school, um, did put up with me and has and continues to put up with me for the last last 12 years as I, as I coached. Um, I was blessed with two beautiful, two beautiful daughters, uh, Riley and Aubrey, um, who wanted everybody to know that they picked out my tie today. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Um, and they, you know, my daughters have finally given me motivation enough and reason enough to, to stop uh, playing and coaching and enjoy the sport that I love as a dad. Um, and taking them to games and coaching them and seeing them be successful and seeing them play and them work hard and, and it's just a beautiful you know feeling and experience um, vice a little bit for his uh, leadership as a coach and later as his as his you know for his respect as an opponent um, I always felt welcomed coming back you know, and play advice or hosting him, and there was never animosity. He was a, a, a mentor, even as even as I was an opponent. He always strived to help me. Um, and, his, and his friendship. Uh, I was able to be a successful player and, and coach because of you know because of him. You know, my success can be traced back to the the, the leadership that he showed me. Uh, and finally, and most importantly, is my, my family, my, my brother Steve, my, my parents Ricky and Joe. Uh, their support uh, for me as a player and a coach has been unwavering uh, for about, I don't know, 30 plus years, which does not feel good to say that number. Uh, makes me feel old. But uh, I can count probably in 30 years on, on my, you know, on two hands with my fingers the number of games and practices that my parents were not at. Uh, they were at every practice. They were at every single game. Um, high school, club, everywhere. They traveled to half the states in the country. Um, my dad took me to Holland, took me to the Netherlands when I was 14 to play in a tournament. 
uh, it went with me. Um, drove me to Nashville, to Franklin. Uh, one year I, I traveled to Knoxville twice a week to practice and play games. Um, and my dad and my mom and dad were there the entire time. Um, they came to every college game, to Wisconsin, to Florida, to, I mean, everywhere across the nation as we played, uh, home games and away games. Um, and now they continue that love and support as, as grandparents. And I don't know that there's a, that there's a game that, that Riley or Aubrey play that they're not there for, for them as well. Um, I don't think I've ever, you know, ever spoken about their impact on me, but their influence and that, that support weighed heavily on me and impacted my decision to stop coaching because I wanted to do for Riley and Aubrey some of the things that they did for me uh, as parents. Um, I wanted to have that same sort of influence and I wanted Riley and Aubrey to feel the same way that I felt about my parents. And I truly would not be here if it were not for the things that they sacrificed and did for me uh, as parents. So thank you guys, I love you so much. Um, again, it's an honor to be here and, and it's, it's truly, truly humbling to, to be up here and, and thank you very much. words about Matthew Sells and uh, Matthew is a, a first two-time state champion for an individual in, in, in black ministry so that's a, a outstanding accomplishment but most like everybody else is going to be inducted today they don't do it by themselves you know they like Mr. Boyd just said that the support system that they have is outstanding and everyone that's getting inducted today that's going to be no different it's the cd sims clan and the sales clan and the vices all over here is it, it, it's a big family and big community and Blackton's a special place to be and with that when you have your athletes that are, are pushed to, to do well a lot of them are self-motivated but that comes from somewhere and that comes from a, a strong drive that comes from a good work ethic and they don't just accidentally find that. You know, when you have great parents that push their kids to do the best that they can, everything else will take care of itself. And that's no, no, no exception for Matthew Sells here because usually when you have great athletes, you, everybody knows that the dads are going to push you. They, they have tough dads, they're going to push you. But when you get special, when you get those tough moms too. I'm telling you, Matthew Sells got a tough mom too because. She never tried to baby her son or, or accept less than his best. And he always led by example. You know, he was never outspoken, but he understood what it took to be where he wanted to be. He had that, he had that drive. And when he was smaller, he, you know, he, he was in football, he was in baseball, he was in wrestling, and he was good in all those sports. And then, you know, he played football, you know, half, halfway through high school too, but he wrestled all the way too, but he knew what, what he wanted to do was wrestle in college. So he did the things that was necessary to make that happen. And uh, the success, you know, he's, he's got banners hanging all in this thing. Um, Two-time state champion, four-time region champion. Um, he was the leader of the team that won four region championships. Went to St. Louis every year. He was that quiet leader that led by example all the time and knew what it what it took. And in the sport of wrestling, it, it, it is grueling. It is physical. It's the hardest sport that you can play in high school. And over his four years, Matthew Sells missed exactly zero practices. Sickness didn't get in the way. Being banged up didn't get in the way. Other things didn't get in the way for years and never missed a single practice. So that shows the dedication that he's got. Not only did he always go through our practices, he would find a way to get to other practices. He wrestled on national teams. He wrestled 
and go find out college athletes, find out where they're training at, and he'd be there too getting extra work because he knew the goals that he had for himself. And, you know, proofs in the pudding, he's, you know, it speaks for himself, and I'm excited for him to be inducted into this Hall of Fame because all of the sacrifice that he did to, to accomplish his goals are always going to be remembered by being inducted in here. And I'm so proud of him, and I can't think of another person that deserves it more than him. So congratulations to my favorite inductee this year, Matthew Sills. I think everybody that knows me from high school know I'm a man of few words, so I'm making it short and sweet here. Um, I just want to thank everybody for coming and calling this uh, back to the staff for, for one, remembering about me and thinking about me for this award. Um, a lot of people say college is some of your best times, but thinking back from college, wrestling, high school wrestling, I'm like, yeah, high school wrestling. College wrestling is a lot of work. <laughs> High school wrestling, man. It was fun playing with everybody and all the friends and go to tournaments with all your friends. Um, I want to thank my family. Like, you know, like I was saying before, my family's traveled with me everywhere. We've gone all over the country, flown places and different tournaments. Coach Bray has been there all the way with me, even from my coach to now friends, long term friends. Of course, my new fiance, high school sweetheart, she's been there with me the whole way, even in middle school. Um, now, I'm an ICU nurse at Vanderbilt, so I'm uh, kind of moving on from the rest of the world. I haven't been coming back much recently, but I try to take a little break from wrestling after 15 years. So, um, so that's just kind of what I'm doing now, I'm just taking care of people. Seeing uh, sick people taken care of. Um, so, this is what I like to do now taking care of people. I'm going to try to go to anesthesia in a few years, try to do surgery to no more. And I appreciate everybody. Uh, Mr. Lawless, wherever he's at, he's been in my corner for the whole, whole time. He's been supporting me since freshman year. We got a little history together, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Everybody does, but we got a little history. Well, don't need too much more detail there, but I appreciate him and everything he does for me too. Thank you, everybody. Uh, 
in his, in his zest to gain weight, his mom would take pure chocolate and she would blend them up and he would uh, drink four and five milkshakes a night. He had a court across the street from his house and he would take that bowl and roll it down about eight feet and he'd hang the ground trying to stretch out as he prayed to grow stronger. Excuse me, you know, he'd get taller. Uh, and taller he did. The sophomore year, he was about 5'9", 127 pounds. And he backed up everything. All time great flattening blades with point guard Isaiah Harper. Uh, and we were down in one of the memories that just sticks with our, me and our staff. Is we were down in Mountain Brook, uh, excuse me, down in Birmingham, playing Mountain Brook two times. Uh, Alabama State champs. They had a, a great guard. They went on to have a great college career at Birmingham Southern. And Isaiah just couldn't do anything with him. And he got in tremendous foul trouble. And with, uh, with two minutes left, excuse me, six minutes left to go in the third quarter, uh, Isaiah picked up his fourth foul. Uh, we were down one. Donovan checks into the game. Uh, six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. We're up seven. We hold on to win. A great, great win for our program. And I'll never forget the next morning I get a call, and it's Bucky McMillan, who's the coach at Sanford. Now he's the coach at, at Mount Brooklyn. Now he's the coach at Sanford University. Who in the world was that skinny young guy that dominated the second half? He said, hey, we didn't have him on our scouting report. And I thought that was sort of a springboard to an amazing, amazing home court career for Don. Uh, Donovan's junior year, uh, we gave him the keys to, to the program, and he took it and ran with it. He was the undisputed leader of what I consider the best basketball program in Blades history, uh, Team 16, a uh, team that was number one ranked team in the state all year. Uh, ranked uh, 22nd in the country by USA Today, and his leadership just galvanized and took that team to places that uh, we even never knew he could go. You know, sort of the theme for that season is play to a standard. And uh, we knew we were going to be good, but we didn't know how good. And play to a standard, play to a standard. So it just, uh, a memory that just, I remember, I, it, it sticks in my head about top is late January, we're playing at Smyrna. Um, um, didn't play with much uh, juice, didn't have a whole lot of uh, detail, just didn't flat and just not playing to the standard that we wanted to play to. Actually, Dobbin played well. We were only up nine at halftime, and I was kicking rocks. I was really kicking rocks. And you go in at halftime, and I don't, I don't load on Dobbin for nine straight minutes. Now, truthfully, I'm telling you, I was really talking to Senior Ron Wilson. <laughs> I was really talking to Christian Witt, and I was really talking to Dante Allen. But Dobbin had to take the hit. And I'll never forget, we're leaving that. Going up, start the second half, leaving the locker room. I feel this hand on my shoulder. I look around at the diamond. He gives me a wink. Uh, we go out, score 17 straight points, uh, play, play the best second half of basketball that I've ever been around. And we never stop playing until the end of the season uh, with, that, with that basketball team. Another story that comes to mind uh, in that year, uh, it was junior year, is uh, we're down playing in the border wars against Spain Park. Spain Park's got three high major guys. One's going to um, uh, Rhode Island. One is going to uh, Memphis. And they have a seven-footer, Marcus Wiley, is going to Auburn. And Wiley dominated the game. When I say dominated, 17, uh, 17 points, 19 rebounds, 10 offensive, seven block shots. Um, and we found ourselves down 54, 41, 301 to go in the game. And we come out of the timeout, never forget uh, Bruce Pearl leaves the game, 3-0-1 to go. We're down 11. Dominic goes and makes back-to-back threes. Uh, has two steals and forces a turnover. Gets Sidney Ryan's Wilson open for a three. Deontay Allen open for a three. And an unbelievable back cut to Jalen White. And we take the lead. Uh, Spain Park hits a big three. We tie the game. We're coming down. Flash shot. Dominic makes a left and right. Uh, Pat and Moon makes makes. Uh, Miller Armstrong better for about a little nine footer. It looks like he's going to have a nice shot. Wiley just wipes it away. Donovan comes up with it. Shoots that famous uh, teardrop floater at the buzzer. We go crazy. And it's probably one of the most electrifying, fun locker rooms that I've ever been a part of. I can just remember sitting back and enjoy it. And watching Donovan just interact with his teammates and his coaching staff. Just soaking up the joy and the fun uh, that they had. And that never stopped until the state semifinal game. Memphis East Stephen to sort of end our season. Um, so we go into uh, Team 17, Dominic Senior, he comes back 6'1", 159. I think he actually played at about 156 that year. Um, and you know, Team 17 will never get the credit it deserved. But unbelievable team. 
Todd was kind of disputed league. It was called district, called district tournament, uh, player of the year in our league, as well as leading the number two ranked team in the state all year to Memphis East all season. And that season was sort of defined by an unbelievably heartbreaking loss to East, East Hamilton. Um, uh, an amazing game, uh, unbelievable environment, two teams playing at an unbelievably high level, and it came down to uh, us being down one with seven seconds to go. Donovan comes down left to right cross, uh, shoots his patented teardrop floater, goes in. We're going to win the game, going to the state tournament. Whistle blows, wipes it off with a charge. Uh, it ended our season and ended Donovan's career, ended our senior career. We sat in that locker room for an hour, wouldn't leave, we cried for an hour. Um, finally got to the bus. And about halfway home from Chattanooga, I get a text. And it's a text from Donovan. It's a text that I read a thousand times. It was my screensaver for over four years. Uh, and it just sort of encapsulated who he was. There's a guy more worried about his coach and his players and his teammates uh, when he just finished the last game of his high school career. Um, looks like I'm sort of in overtime on my time that, that, that I'm allowed, so I'll, I'll wrap it up. But, um, you know, I had the honor to be at Donovan's wedding this summer. It was just a beautiful wedding. It was a beautiful bride. Couldn't help but just sit down in, in that moment and say, man, those are the, the same attributes, the same characteristics that made him such a great teammate and such a great player and so good to, to his coaching staff and his players. Uh, it's going to be the same thing, same characteristics, a great husband, uh, a, a great father, and an unbelievable provider for his family. So, with that said, Don has been an honor and a privilege to be able to introduce you today and come on up here, Hall of Famer. Keep us in the huddle and we'd be arms around each other and he'd just talk and talk and talk and get everybody's name wrong and just. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was the best time of my life. But uh, seriously, I just want to thank all the staff at Blackman and Paul Fangley for, uh, for inducting me and seeing all these familiar faces, Ms. Big and Dr. Justice. It was, it was a pleasure going to school here for four years and uh, just y'all y'all let me be who I was and each throughout each phase of my life. So that was, it was pretty cool. Uh, I want to thank my family, of course. My wife, Kelly, she's amazing. We've been married for, I, I get it wrong. I, we've been married since, since this summer. I get it wrong every single time. Her, her parents, and then as, as mentioned, in each, each person that's been up here, that our, my, our, every single one of our support systems has been amazing. Couldn't do it without, it, without them. We, uh, we've had some long days and, and some, a lot of different cars. We're always switching out different cars. And, Somebody's gonna get me to practice. Somebody we're going here. And I, I remember being in middle school. I went to, I went to black K through 12. Being in middle school, and uh, I, we get out of there at 3:15. High school gets out at 3:30, and uh, I walk over to Jordan's car, and I have to literally come sit right here in this hallway and have cheerleading practice every day. And I have to. That was my only way. That was my only way to get home. So I'd be over here, and Coach Warren, and Coach Gregory, and I, as long as I wasn't disrupting the practice, it was cool. And I, we. Just that, those, those make me feel like a, feels like five years ago, even though I don't even know how long ago it is now, but those are just the really good times. I remember even back then, like, if you'd see Coach Warman in there running practice with guys like Darius and Alec and Q, and that's really what started the, the standard for me at Blackman in my playing career, just because uh, I, could, I could hear him in there, and then probably words he shouldn't be using with high schoolers, but he was using them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, got, I got my fair share of that for sure. <laughs> Sent me home a lot of days, and I didn't even know if God liked me, and then he called me later, and he said that he, he, he didn't mean He meant it at somebody else. And like, like he said, I, 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 it, it gave me pretty tough skin, which I need. So uh, but definitely, like he, like he said, I was, I was tiny my freshman year of high school. Um, actually, not a lot of people know this, but I, wanted, I, didn't, I didn't want to touch another basketball after eighth grade. I remember we were at Stewart's Creek my eighth grade year. Coach Jones was there. And uh, I just knew we were going to walk into Black and Middle School the next day and no ball. The ball rack wasn't going to be out. Coach Moore was going to have us running 35 suicides, probably the normal. 
of that of that year's team and uh i was telling my mom on the way back from stewart's creek like i'm done i'm done playing back my dad wasn't there so i kind of got out on that one since he wasn't there i was able to be soft and and my let my mom yeah she she was with me she wanted me to be done too but <laughs> but i was i was done with that and then uh season season ended up wrapping up my eighth grade year coach Gorman, we were in, we were in the cafeteria over there he came over there and about four or five of us had a pretty good basketball at the middle school and he came to the lunch one day and sat with us and told us he was gonna uh, we pretty much we had to come to tryouts but we were pretty much on the team and ever since then he uh, he treated us from 13 and a half 14 years old to 18 like we were 20 24 year old college players so uh his attention to detail, timing, everything was just, it, it, it's, if you know him, it's a little over the top, but it's just this type of stuff you need when you're, when you're going through that, that stage of your life. And I still live every single minute of my life by that. He's one of the biggest influences on me ever and will always be. Uh, I mean, it's just still be stuff like the bus was leaving and we had blaze time, of course, which was always 10 minutes before. Said the bus was leaving at 5.30. If you weren't on the bus by 5.20, either it was going to play or you were going to play. And so uh, that's just, that's how I've always lived my life ever since uh, I've been with him. And um, yeah, I mean, it was, it, was a, it was a great ride. We uh, had some really good teams here. A lot of guys that, that laid the standard for us before, like I even got here really. Play with, honestly, like being 100% honest, I played with a ton of guys during my four years that were 100% better basketball players than me. And uh, Coach Ford just used to tell me, like, he'd tell me, and don't worry about that growing stuff, you'll be fine even if you don't do it and, and whatever, all this stuff. And if you don't you got Coach Bell yelling, you know, get in the hole and have PTSD from that. And, <laughs> I mean, Coach Voss, like Coach Voss was my favorite guy in the world my freshman and sophomore year because Coach Voss was a good, he was a good guy. <laughs> Coach Warren was just, I mean, he was about every single thing. Coach Voss was a good guy. I was so sad when uh, we lost to uh, Hamilton out of Memphis my sophomore year at State. And, we got back to the locker room, Coach Boss told me he was going to accept the head coaching job for Riverdale, and he's doing a tremendous job. But that was like the saddest day of my life. I was just, oh, that's my guy. Coach Boone told me about every single day. And then, but I mean, it was, it was, it was funny too, because shortly after that, like you said, he, he handed me the keys. Like after I'm about to cry, because my favorite guy in the world was leaving, so my, the guy that I thought hated me handed me the keys to the team and uh, made me really get in the gym start working more and I did grow and and just uh just be, it just became a better player and with that becoming a better person. My parents were always they I never really uh I mean I wasn't a bad kid or anything really. I, I think I was I, mean, I lied about one report card one time. But I hate to read but she made me she made me read for thirty minutes a day and it couldn't be sports related and that was the worst time of my life. And uh, <laughs> it was really bad. I was trying to go play a youth game or Nationals with the team, Tennessee Legends down there in Nashville, and uh, I had one of those old report cards still stashed away in the bottom of the backpack, gave that to her, and, and that, was, that was a bad one. She, my dad always let her do the, the punishments with me. He, he kind of did stuff with the girls, but uh, I guess you, you were a little tough on that, on that. Some stuff, but a little tough on that. Uh, but yeah, no, seriously, like, I mean, it just, what I learned from them is just be a good person, and that's always what I try to, Carry throughout my career here and uh, throughout my career at middle was just uh, be a good guy and always be a good teammate, be a good brother, be a good son, be a good friend, be a good uh, player, be a good role model. And so uh, and it's funny too because Coach Ford, I, he, he never, I, I never got anything from him that was like an MVP of the team or best offensive player, or like nothing besides uh, he'd give me the good, the best teammate award every single year. And that kind of stuff. I mean, at 15, 16, I was like, hey, like, I must really suck. Like, you must really think I'm just like a good guy. But uh, he was just teaching me. He was just teaching me those, those valuable lessons. Of, you, you do the right stuff. You be a good person. And uh, everything else will be taken care of. So I kind of just live my life like that. And uh, again, just thank you to the committee for, for inducting me and everybody else. And like, I, like I've been black in high school, black, and, and everything black, and that's. That's been my identity for so long. And, like I'm Mr. Lawless, like I've been running around here since I was six years old. I think Siobhan, I'm sorry, you old now. She, she graduated here in like 2007 and just been every football game Friday nights, basketball, I was always here on Friday nights and just wanting to be those guys that I was looking up to. And I uh, think I'm, I can finally say I'm one of those guys that I was looking up to back then. So it's, it's a pretty cool accomplishment. And I, I appreciate everybody coming out and 
congratulations to all the other inductees and thank you. And he, and he hadn't stopped. He hadn't stopped since. He's, uh, he's still coaching. Um, he's had a coaching career that extends 50 plus years. Um, and probably a playing career that it extends just as long. I don't know if he's still getting out there, but it wasn't too long ago that I, you know, I saw him out in the park and, and he was still knocking it around a little bit. Um, and so he he epitomizes someone who just has a love for what he does. And, and that, is, that is the sport of soccer, but also uh, developing and enriching people using that sport and using athletics. Uh, he has been the director of coaching. He's coached at uh, high schools, clubs, Olympic development programs, and is a coach educator. Uh, not only is he coaching players, but as he mentioned for me, he is so good at what he does that he coaches other coaches and educates other coaches at how to be better at their jobs. Um, he has held the highest, or some of the highest uh, coaching licenses that are available in the United States, uh, with the USSF National A license and the National Youth license. Here at Blackman, he has amassed over 300 wins. Uh, boys teams and over 200 points for the girls teams. He's led the boys to four state tournament appearances in 04, 05, 07, and 2018. Semi-finals appearances in 05 and 07. He was runners up in, in 2018 with the, uh, I mean, an unbelievable team, a historic Blackman team that uh, lost one game, which was the, the state final, the state championship. Um, and he also has a state tournament appearance for the girls in 2003. I'll also point out that the first state tournament appearance was, I was there, uh, that was me too, so. Uh, um, beyond the long list of accomplishments and achievements, however, is, <clears throat> I think, a, a unique, um, <coughs> excuse me, a uniquely um, powerful uh, and positive legacy that extends beyond just coaching players in, in tactics and technique. Um, some of my, as I mentioned before, favorite memories in, in life and in soccer come in Blackman High School. Um, and I mentioned a few of the, the playing memories, but a lot of them weren't, weren't necessarily on the field. They were just, as many of the other inductees have mentioned, Spending time with those teammates and spending time with, with uh, a group of people that you at that time considered your brothers, you know, and considered your family. And and for us, Vice was that father figure for us um, and not just on the field. I suspect, given his lengthy 
coaching career, there are hundreds or thousands of, of others who share the same, you know, share that feeling uh, uh, and share that respect and love for Bill Weiss. Um, I think um, that he represents just about everything that is good in, in athletics. He's fun, you know, and he's funny. And, and you, he's just somebody that you love playing for and love being around. But he also represents hard work and competitive, competitiveness, character, and idealism, uh, passion, determination, and, and development. And you could probably go on, like I could go on forever uh, with adjectives that describe Bill um, To me, and countless others, but your impact has been deeper than simply tactics and technique and, and shooting and crossing and passing. Um, I don't know, and I, I don't have, I don't have one memory uh, of Bill Weiss that doesn't include a laugh and a joke and a smile or a hug or something that, that is positive. Uh, and again, I don't think that any, any player, The only exception may be referees. Uh, if you've ever been to a, a soccer game that uh, Vice is coaching, he has the best one-liner you have ever heard in your entire life uh, for referees. We were playing in Hendersonville one year, and the side, this was before, you know, we, we had turf, they could afford turf. The side of Hendersonville's soccer field was AstroTurf. And we had a particularly um, troublesome referee. And he made a call. Vice throws a water ball down on the ground and it skids off the AstroTurf and skips onto the field. And the referee just kind of points out there to it. And Vice goes, looks at him, closes his eyes. <laughs> and walks out like this to pick up the water bottle. And he got, he got yelled for him. <laughs> and then the referee told him that he could not leave the bench. Uh, he had to sit on the bench the entire rest of the game. He was going to get another yell for him. So I stood on top of the bench uh, and continued coaching the game. However, that's what I'm talking about, those smiles, you know, those jokes and that laughter and, and some of those memories that, that are on the field but don't include scoring goals or winning games are things that, that, that impact not just the players that are playing but every single player that, is, that has been under his stewardship. Um, he refused to cut players the, the entire time that I've, that I've known him. Uh, from when I was playing for him to when I coached against him. He did not cut a single player. And that dedication, I thought, and that reasoning was if someone was, was willing to sacrifice and put in the time and effort to be a part of our team and our group, he didn't want to take that away from them. He didn't want to prevent them from being a part of something special. And I always thought that was, that was again, just a unique quality. Um, so that players and, and young people didn't have, didn't have their, their value limited to their athletic ability or their success on the side. They, they could feel, they could, be, they could have value as a part of the community and the team um, that, that I think was was so much better off and so had so much leadership from Vice that, that everybody could play for him, whether you were playing or not, um, loved Bill Weiss and loved being a part of him. He taught players to be adaptable, positive, versatile, and selfless. And his concerns were always for an environment that exceeded self-interest and promoted the success of the team, the school, and the community, which is why it is nearly impossible to find his individual accomplishments. 
and they are numerous, but I can't even find what they are, and I played for them because he does not value uh, the, his individual success, only the, the success of his program and his players. He will be missed forever, I believe, as a coach here at Black. But his legacy is that of a mentor, a friend, a husband, and a father. And to me, that has been cemented at a, at, on a much higher point. So, Bill Bus. I was proud for Rutherford School, that the only Rutherford School to get this honor. Siegel. <laughs> Jeff, uh, Jeff Boyne put in, maybe it could be his memorial. 
little tournament. I'm still alive. Uh, and just recently, last year, when you saw the picture of where we my hat is raining in, in Oakland, and they took a picture there, and then uh, you showed me this banner that at the top, if you look closely, is the Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars. Uh, so that, that was the universe thing. I enjoyed being part of Black and High School and all that it gave to me. Being with outstanding colleagues and educators and administrators and students was ideal for me. Having these people made, made BHS a place where dreams sometimes come true. My dream.